Hello, everyone. Welcome to our live event. We are um, here at Oak Hills High School. I'm going to go ahead and start with introductions. Go ahead, Mr. Caps. Good evening and welcome, Bulldog parents, so to our Oak Hills High School Title I Parent Night. Um, I think we had maybe some of you last year when we had this meeting. We held it uh, virtual as well um, via Zoom. Um, and I'm sorry we couldn't be in person. Uh, this year, um, I know we would all like to probably be in person, um, but we thought would be this would be the next best thing. Um, we have uh, some good information for you, and um, I'm hoping that a lot of you were able to join us this evening. Um, Ms. Crawford. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Looking forward to hearing what Ms. Calderon has to share. My name is Michelle Crawford. I am your parent community liaison. Great. So um, we have about 16 people. Oh, well, let me first introduce myself. I'm Ms. Calderon. I am the assistant principal. Um, I am returning back to Oak Hills. I was a teacher here previously for eight years. So um, I came home and now I'm here. And um, just as you guys are joining from Facebook Live or YouTube, uh, you are allowed to type questions in the comment box. Uh, we will get those directly. And as we go through information, if you do have any questions, um, we'll go ahead and kind of pause where we're at and either I will answer the question or we'll get some insight from our lovely panel. So let's go ahead and get started. So all of our administrators are obviously not here today. I just wanted to go ahead and introduce uh, everyone aside from Mr. Caps and myself. Uh, Mr. Gray is brand new to our site. He is the Vice Principal of Student Support, uh, letters A through K. Ms. Genevieve Johnston is also a Vice Principal in our Student Support Department, and she is the Alpha letters L through Z. Mr. Yancey is the Vice Principal of Athletics, and then we also have a new uh, VP of Activities, and that is Ms. Carrie Martinez. So those are the administrators whom you can contact anytime to uh, get help or insight on how we run Oak Hills High School. So the presentation that I will be going over is specifically about Title I and how we receive funding from the state to better serve our students and the programs that we offer uh, for the students. So these are federal funds that we receive um, from the government to help with to meet the needs of educate the educational needs of our students. Uh, they're used to support um, effective evidence-based strategies. So that way we can help close the achievement gap that our students um, have in regards to their tests. And we also want to encourage students to get prepared for what's to come in the future. So those are uh, the key ways in which we, we spend Title I. So what does it look like from uh, our perspective coming in? We actually have um, a large budget, one would think, but I will tell you, and Mr. Katz can tell you, that it goes by and it gets used really fast. So this year, we were allocated $577,954,000, and in that money, we allocate it for certain items. So a large chunk of our money does go to salaries, and we pay for specific intervention teachers. So we have a reading intervention teacher, a math intervention teacher, bilingual assistants, and a parent liaison, which is Ms. Crawford, um, to help facilitate this money along with getting input from our families. So uh, that is a huge chunk. Um, a large amount of it also goes to professional development. We want to ensure that our teachers have um, knowledge of the best strategies and can, can implement those within the classroom um, and prepare our students to uh, reach standard or grade level, but also be able to excel in the classroom as well as they prepare for trade schools, college, um, whatever they want after high school. Um, other ways in which we spend our money is through um, various resources, materials, and programs. So we spend about $118,000 um, in regards to that. Um, that can include resources, um, from lab equipment to um, special programming on the computers that allow our students to have access to uh, the best curriculum. Um, we did just receive an additional rollover amount of 
thousand dollars, seven hundred six dollars. So that was um, a large chunk that we'll be able to uh, continue to spend in regards to resources for the students. So that is just a snapshot or overview of the money that we receive. Um, how do we figure out how this money is spent um, and where does the accountability come from? It is through our local control and accountability plan that the district does set up in regards to our student population. So we set goals in regards to that. Then we plan um, modes of action and then we allocate our resources so that way we can uh, reach the goals not only of our school site, but also of the district. So the first goal that we have is to make sure we provide high quality classroom curriculum and instruction, as well as assessments to prepare our students for success, uh, whether it be in college and or their career. Uh, the second thing is to provide physically and emotionally climate for student learning that's culturally responsive for our students. And I think all of us would agree coming off of um, COVID and distance learning, that is crucial. And then the last one would be to, making, to make sure we are involving our parents, our families, and the community in the process of uh, student learning. So those are the three main district goals. I'm going to see if we have any questions. No questions thus far, so I think we're doing okay. Now, how do we keep accountability at the school site? We do this through our SIPSA, which is the Single Plan for Student Achievement. And what that is, it's a tool for us to delegate how the money is spent, along with ensuring that we're reaching the goals that we set forth as a site. And uh, there's a, a lot of key players in this process. So we have our site council um, that is comprised of teachers, students, parents, um, classified staff and administrators to help ensure that all of the funds are spent the way that they should be, um, along with getting input from that committee, along with our English Learner Advisory Committee, our ELAC team, and our school leadership. And I failed to mention um, on here, but it also is um, including of our parent center. So you gain a lot of insight and input from our subgroups to ensure that we're making sure we're making the best decisions um, and being fiscally responsible. Other things that we include in our SIPSA is ensuring that the WAS committee, the self-study and the visiting um, team that comes on campus and gives us, you know, areas of growth and strengths, we're ensuring that we're incorporating those goals and modes of improvement in how we are allocating our money as well. So we're always ensuring that we're growing and making sure we're doing what's best for students. So just to kind of give you a brief overview of our five goals that we have in our SIPSA, the first one being is that we're gonna to continue to increase academic rigor and the use of technology across the curriculum to improve student learning and prepare all students for college and career readiness. So um, you'll notice that we are a one-to-one -one school site. Students are using their Chromebooks. They're making sure um, that they have access to various programs. You'll see your students may be doing assignments online um, or having to use their computer to research to write papers or do different things. We're making sure that the students are equipped and prepared with um, high academic rigor, and we're providing a lot of resources for them within this goal. So. Um, that's the first one. The second one is for us to increase the amount of data that we're using. I mean, I'm not going to read this verbatim, but the goal is to increase the amount of data that we're using in order to help ensure that we're meeting student needs. But also in that, if there's a gap in regards to how students are progressing and maybe how teachers are um, sharing that content, we're going to ensure that we send our teachers to conferences or prepare them um, with professional development maybe on site. So that way we can equip um, the classroom so that way we can see different results. So we're really focused on data and using that to drive our instruction. The third is to ensure we're reading, uh, reaching our specific subgroups with um, interventions, specifically with our English students, uh, students with disabilities, and any student who's struggling on campus. So um, a lot of our teachers right now are reflecting upon 
the progress of students and if students aren't reaching um, standard or meeting success, we're going to see what we can do to provide interventions for them. A uh, current one that we do have on site that uh, your students hopefully are taking care of is uh, after school tutoring. So that is offered Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday um, till 4.30 4 each day. Um, so we can give you more information on that towards the end, or if you want to add that in the chat, I can type that out. But that is a resource that is beneficial for all students. So that's um, one of those uh, ways in which we help. Uh, goal number four is to continue to seek student involvement. So um, we want to make sure we're hearing student voices, we're hearing your voice, um, parents' involvement, and how it's going to help shape our social emotional programs on campus. We really want to, um, again, take into consideration the last year and a half that our students have been at home and even still transitioning back to school. We're making sure that we're going to help students in any capacity. So um, really listening to you as well as the students. And the fifth goal is to ensure that we are focusing on reading literacy. Uh, through informational text and making sure we're using um, different formats or models in order to show that. So you might hear in some history or social or science classes, uh, we're using the CER model. Um, and you'll notice that maybe in English classes and even history, um, we're talking about using a rubric to kind of grade student work to allow for us to kind of see how uh, student students are enhancing their reading and writing literacy at school. So those are our main five goals. And again, how we allocate the money is dependent upon those goals. So how can you provide input? Um, there's several different ways listed on the screen here. Um, I'm really gonna leave this to Miss Michelle Crawford, who is our parent liaison, um, that can kind of shed some light. She is luckily involved in all of these groups. So maybe she can kind of give an overview of maybe how to get involved, but also what these uh, committees do. Hello, everyone. Uh, just to first cover your parent center, those uh, meetings happen once a month. And um, that is uh, primarily fundraising to help families in need and provide scholarships for senior students. And um, you're able to give your feedback there. We like to see you, everyone is welcome. And um, we also have monthly meetings in our school site council. That is the third Tuesday of every month. Uh, we will be in room B7, one of our teacher classrooms. And uh, like Ms. Calderon said, we really need your input. It is a great way to be involved without a real commitment. Uh, you're welcome to join and sit in and listen anytime. Um, doesn't have a, a lot of homework or anything, just um, so you can learn and see how our funds are spent and happenings here on campus. Um, administration and staff will talk about things going on. Also, we have our ELAC meetings. We meet every other month. Those meetings are conducted in English and Spanish. And um, that is a means for us to focus on meeting our EL student needs. You guys can join in any way. Um, you can email me. I know Ms. Calderon has my email address uh, later on in the slideshow here. And um, you can call at any time and ask for the liaison and they can give you me and I can answer any questions you have. Wonderful. Mr. Caps, do you want to add anything just in regards to Title I or how to how we uh, rely on parent input? Yeah, and well, I was just going to say that uh, Title I, we've had Title I funds here at Oak Hills High School, I believe the last three years. Before that time, we were a non-Title I school uh, and our district, like I said, three years ago, went uh, a full Title I uh, throughout the whole entire district. So some of the parents may know that I may and others may not have known. Um, also, I wanted to kind of maybe clarify, uh, we mentioned WASC a couple different times. Um, WASC is our uh, uh, the uh, entity that that gives us our accreditation um, and that accreditation comes 
uh, through, like Ms. Calderon said, with a visiting committee and, and uh, a multi-day process where they uh, are on campus and, and go throughout the school and, and give us advice and suggestions. Uh, without that WASC visit um, and from that committee, um, we would not have our diplomas certified uh, and, and we wouldn't have students be able to graduate with a certification uh, uh, from the state of California or from that, that entity. So um, we just wanted to throw that out there. Um, some of you may have heard of WASP before, but some of you may have not. So anyways, I know that's a lot of information to, to uh, throw at you guys. So They're doing really good so far. We don't have any questions. Feel free to add any questions in the chat if you like. Yeah, I guess they're digesting it all very nicely. I mean, they might be. Um, and then just another thing that we want to add in here, we will start um, sending out some parent surveys and getting some feedback from you along with students. So be on the lookout for that. Um, a great way to find all of that, uh, those various different ways. Um, ensuring that uh, the infinite campus record that we have for you, that number and email will most up-to-date and most recent. Um, so we do communicate out through Thrillshare, but we're also using our social media platform and our school website to communicate a lot of that information out. So be on the lookout for um, posts on Facebook and Instagram, but also on our website on our live feed as well. So um, as we continue, um, our counseling department couldn't be here tonight, but I do want to shed some light on some amazing programs that we do have here, and there is some information in which you can uh, find that. So this is our counseling team. Um, we have Ms. Lorraine Hargis. She is our head counselor. Our 12th grade counselor is Ms. Uh, Sandoval. Then we have Mr. Freeling, followed by Ms. Dane. And then our two freshman counselors are Ms. Browning and then Mr. Boberg. So hopefully your students have had a chance to talk with them, um, whether it's in regard to their classes or just a simple check-in. Um, they are more than welcome to set up appointments with their counselors and discuss their needs. So programs that we have on campus available to the students is the Bridge Program. So this is helpful for our senior students who are transitioning to VVC. It's going to help provide tools as they transition there. Um, and then what's nice about this, it's allowing them to be uh, ready for that seamless transition in regard to perhaps the rigor and um, the level of, of change from high school to college uh, in regards to like that workload. So if you do have any um, concerns or want insight on that, you'll contact Ms. Hargis uh, for information in regards to that. So two other programs that we have available are um, our early college academy, which is called ECA. You might hear that. Um, we actually open this up to 10th graders now. So it's 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. And what's nice about this is they actually take college level courses during the school day. So they're earning college credit um, and that will allow them to transfer into a school or university and have credits to towards graduation. So uh, that is a wonderful, program that we have here and um, they and students don't have to pay for college textbooks or tuition which is an insight so if you're interested in that program please reach out to the counseling department and then the second thing we have is dual enrollment so students have the ability to take classes early and get ahead so uh, we offer those courses on campus so students will have the opportunity to take those after school and earn college credit. So two other additional wonderful programs that we have. Um, I'm not sure if Mr. Caps wants to add anything in regards to those programs. Well, I think that, uh, thank you, Ms. Calderon. I think that uh, our, our ECA program, our early college program is flourishing um, after uh, getting off the ground a couple of years ago now. Um, Ms. Hargis and the counseling department have worked really hard to make this available to our students and our students um, are, are thriving within this uh, program and, and it's going to continue to grow um, every year. Uh, like uh, Ms. Caldwell mentioned, we're, we're adding another uh, third cohort and um, I'm, I'm really, really happy and very proud that we have this program. Dual enrollment is another uh, a great program as well and uh, a way for students to, to, to jump in there and take classes um, at the end of the day and uh, get a lot of these courses um, done and have, uh, in a lot of cases, we've had students 
uh, graduate uh, from here with uh, their first two years of uh, junior college done and uh, taken care of, which, uh, you know, not only uh, saves on anxiety and, and stress, but also saves on the pocketbook. So, um, you know, very proud of those programs. And uh, like Ms. Calderon said, I'm very happy with the direction they're going. Awesome, thank you. And um, those are just on the screen right now, some key tidbits from Ms. Hargis. Um, this next spring, we're gonna start offering another uh, rollout of for dual enrollment. Um, those classes will be posted on the counseling webpage, which I'm gonna direct you to on the next slide. Um, and a nice feature or caveat to dual enrollment is we do offer late busing for students. So if that is a need for you and your family, that is a, an option for you. So if you are interested in any information in regards to the counseling department, um, they have their own specialized website. Um, I will be posting these slides to our website for you to access. So if you click right here where it says yellow when you get access to these slides, it's going to take you directly to a web page that looks like the image. And there you can navigate through the tabs and they have tons of wonderful information from, you know, what classes do I take here at Oak Hills? How can I take dual enrollment classes along with um, social emotional well being and tons of other information? So it's a wonderful one created by our counseling department. So, other resources that might be beneficial to you, as I said, our website um, not only houses a majority of the information, um, bill schedules, our staff hand or our student handbook. Um, district policies, our Oak Hills policies and procedures. So there's a plethora of information there. If you want some quick up-to-date um, notifications, following us on Facebook or Instagram is going to give you uh, real-time uh, communication and allow you to interact with us and ask questions on that platform as well. So um, it's manned by two of our administrators, so we're able to uh, get answers to you, hopefully quickly. So um, just those additional resources for you. And um, just in the future, if you have questions, oh, I have a typo on my email, so I'll have to fix that. Um, Nisperia, uh, so you can email me. Mr. Caps' email is not on here, but you are more than welcome to communicate with him. Um, most importantly, uh, Miss Crawford is uh, on here as well. And as she stated before, she is more than willing to take your phone call or she'll respond to your email um, and answer any questions that you may have as well. Ms. Calderon, we have a question in the chat. We do. Right. Good Are there courses taken during the entire year? I'm assuming that's referred to dual enrollment. Um, those are semester long classes. So they'll start uh, in August, end in December, and then January through May. Yeah, that's a great okay. question. And it's a little bit yeah. different than uh, all of our other courses because we here, we don't have semester courses um, at Oak Hills normally, but the dual enrollment courses, like Ms. Caldwell said, are semester. So a little bit different. Good question. And then uh, thank you for asking this. If she has any other questions, AD, the one with the question, you're welcome to email uh, Larray Hargis. She's at the same uh, email address we have here listed for us. That her name is L A R E R L A R A E dot Hargus H A R G U E S S. I can put it in the chat. Thank you. You're yeah, and, and, and they can also get um, that information from our website as well. Um, I, I know that uh, there's a lot of talk about websites and this and that. I know sometimes that uh, not so much frightens people, but gives them a sense of anxiety. Um, I, our, our website is, is, uh, is much better than it was a couple of years ago. So it's uh, much more user friendly. So you guys can get that information uh, when you go to the website. Perfect. And just a compliment for thank you for offering this tonight. We love for parents to get involved. You know, we really are here to serve you and our students. So hopefully um, this is, will be the first of many that we'll be able to have with you to get feedback. Um, if you are using the chat to ask those questions, but also just a welcoming platform for us, for you to, you know, get to know who we are um, and utilize, again, Miss Crawford, I'm going to put her out there. She is so knowledgeable and she has been here and was a parent here, so she really knows how the school works, but also is um, 
super excited to get parent involvement in making sure your voices are heard. So awesome. Absolutely. All right. Well, we went for 25 minutes. We will stay on here. If you do have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I know it doesn't give you the vocal platform, but hopefully um, your fingers are good at typing. And we'll stay on here for probably another five minutes or so. Um, this video will be archived, so you will be able to replay this if maybe you miss some information. And as I said, too, the uh, slides presentation will also be shared. Yes. <clears throat> I'm really upset that I misspelled my email. <laughs> it's okay. Catch it. <laughs> I, I thought it was intentional so they would email me. <laughs> it could be, you I, know. Diverting in a way to my yeah. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the main slide. No, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. The and was, and was, was bothering me. <laughs> I just want to say I thank for thank that uh, thank you to the parents uh, and those of you that are on tonight. Um, I know that uh, we uh, would all like to be uh, in person and, and in front of you all. Um, we have a lot of things going on here uh, at Oak Hills High School. In fact, um, we were scheduled to have a jazz concert and also maybe a play from uh, one of our neighboring high schools, and we also have a meet the team night for soccer. So um, Oak Hills High School is used often and frequently for many events uh, and, and not just our own events. So, but I want to thank you all for jumping on here tonight. I know that people are busy uh, and it is at the end of the day, uh, you're finished from work, I know, and you're probably trying to get dinner going, um, but we appreciate uh, those of you that have come on tonight. And uh, as always, uh, we want to thank you for sending your students to Oak Hills High School. And uh, again, I apologize for all the voice time you have to hear from me on those messages on Thrillshare but I'm going to keep sending them anyway. So <laughs> awesome. There was a question in the chat about scholarship opportunities. Diane Rodriguez, she is the best of the best. Um, she has shared Google classrooms with all the students. So if they join that Google classroom, she puts out uh, monthly, even sometimes weekly flyers that have the most up-to-date scholarship information. I also left her email in the chat. So if you want to email her, she will get back to you along with any other information that might be beneficial to you. Absolutely. Uh, this information is also provided from uh, Diane Rodriguez. It's emailed monthly to your student. Thank you. And then good evening. Is dual enrollment also for seniors? I believe so. Yes, yes. 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 it's for every, every grade. Any mm -hmm. grade. Yeah. And then how concerned should I be with the LPAC assessment results and who should I talk to about it? So um, if your student is classified as an EL, um, there are some criteria in order for them to be considered uh, reclassified. So a GPA requirement, um, them passing the LPAC test along with um, their scores on how they do on the, the state assessment as well for English as well. So um, we can talk to you. We have a liaison. I'm gonna go ahead and put her name in the chat and she can also give you some clarifications as to all of the criteria and maybe where your child is right now and what we can do in the future, maybe some tips from their English teacher or areas of focus, we could break that down a little bit more. So her name is Pilar Ibarra. Um, she is focusing in on that and making sure uh, students know where they stand in the reclassification process. And we will be more than happy to have her reach out to parents so that way they that you can get a better understanding of where your student is. Very awesome. Good. Oh, Bulldogs with the football, yes. Tomorrow, it'll determine if we have a share title or full right title for MRL. Good times. <laughs> awesome. I think we have about a minute left before we'll end our broadcast. So if you have any other questions, please feel free to add them into the chat. I think this is about as quiet as I've been all day. I know. I think so, too. I can't hear you echoing through the, the office. <laughs> all right. I think that's going to end us out, guys. If you want to say goodbye. Yes. 
Once again, thank you all for uh, joining us tonight. Uh, and as always, uh, thank you for sending your students to Oak Hills High School. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Good night. Good night.